Hi my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. I have a couple things on this video. One is talking about sashing and cornerstones. A few of you have written and said that you struggle a bit with that. And I have a little tip about how to think about it and how to assemble that I think will help you. Uh, then I'm going to talk about my sweatshop sewing progress, my Liberty Box progress, and let's see, we'll see what else we get in. So first of all, the quote behind me is done with blocks and sashings and no cornerstones. So here is a block, so we'll start with the blue one. This is a block, the blue block. Here's the green block. In between them is a strip of fabric. That's called sashing. Below it is a long strip between the rows. So this is a row, that's a row, and in between are these long strips, and that's also sashing. This quilt has no cornerstones, but if it did, here's one, it would be used to assemble along that long strip to break up the strip with another design element. So I'm just gonna set that there a second. Um, cornerstones give you another element, so it can actually make a secondary design. But I think its biggest power is to help you assemble. Uh, you can assemble these sections easier, I think, with the cornerstones. Now, a lot of people are, have told me that, oh, they, you know, sewing these long strips, what they'll do is they'll sew long rows, and then, you know, they have to sew all these long rows together, all the strips together, and that it, it's, they feel it's bulky, they feel they don't have as much accuracy. So my first tip for working with this is to work in sections so that you're doing chunks. And I talked about this several, several different times in the past videos. Four blocks, one, two, three, four and then come over and do four blocks. One, two, three, four. Now you've got two units. Put the sashing between those two, then do other units until you eventually have rows to do. But you're doing them in great big chunks rather than these long skinny rows, particularly the long skinny sashings. That seems to kind of bother people a bit. But I have another tip that I think will help you with how you think about the whole process because it is no different than creating a nine patch. All right, so you've all probably created a nine patch. Here's a nine patch. The nine patch has, you know, nine sections and you're going to, like on this one, I've sewn here, I've sewn these three and I've sewn these three and then I will eventually sew these together here and then sew those together there. And on the nine patch, you know, I've pressed to the dark side uh, because there is no bulk, like these are not blocks. So this is what I'm going to show you next. So I, I press to the dark side so that when I put them up like here, they can nestle together. All right, now th remember this. Remember this image of a nine patch. That is exactly what sewing blocks and sashings is. These reds would be, these four outside reds would be blocks. This would be sashing and a cornerstone. And I have some to show you. Well, let's look down here. All right, so I have f four blocks and a sashing row. This is no different than a nine patch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What is our nine patch? One, two, three, four, five, six, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you're, you're sewing blocks and sashing the same way. Now I will press them differently because all of your seams are on these blocks. Your blocks have all these seams. So I press, let me flip this over so you can see. So I press to the sashing, which is not pressing to the darker side. In most cases, my sashing might be lighter, so it's pressing to the light. But to me, it's worth it because it does not create that um, bulk and ridges that might happen with uh, pressing to the block. You know, particularly you've got points here. It is just smoother and lays flatter if you press where you have less struggle. Now the sashing also has to be pressed to the light side. So see, it's also pressed to the light side. And then when I'm assembling this, I assemble it exactly like I would a nine patch. I take and put one over the top, you know, nestle the, the unit there so that they, this, whoops, this has got a, I was chain piecing, so it's got the thread there, I can't pull it back. 
All right. So you, so you pull there and you can see that they're sectioned together. The same down here. I will just be taking this unit and nestling them together. Whoops. Nestling them together and then sewing across. Now I do feel like you've got a longer expanse here. When you're doing a nine patch, you might not even pin anything. You might just, you know, nestle it, hold it, and sew across. But with the blocks, pins, pins are your friend. So you want to pin it, and then you will be successful. The third tip that I really have is you want to cut strips. You want to cut strips for your sashing. You don't just want to take a length, sew it on and chop it off because what happens is you're not being accurate. Your block, maybe your block wasn't exactly 12 and a half in this case. So if you put your sashing on one and that means it's not 12 and a half either, you're sort of chopping it off. You might have be pulling the fabric a little bit. So it's maybe elongating. The whole thing for great patchwork is measuring. Measure, 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 measure. Measure all the time. Be sure that all your units are always what they should be. Uh, if it's a 12 and a half inch block, make it a 12 and a half inch block. Fix your problems. Learn how to get a quarter inch seam. Uh, same with your sashings. Cut the sashing to the size it's supposed to be. Then when you go to pin it, pin, uh, you know, all across. I'm putting the sashing on the top so you can see it. So you want to pin all across, pin at the front, pin at this intersection, pin at the middle for this 12 inch block, you know, pin at this other intersection. That way you'll have the best accuracy. Okay, <laughs> that is, <laughs> that is that part. Now I wanna show you my progress on my uh, Beach Baby sweatshop sewing. <laughs> so my Beach Baby blocks are these and I have some of them uh, pinned up on the quilt over there by Norm the Gnome. <laughs> so what I did is I cut the rest of these with the AccuQuilt die cut machine and then I've been sewing. I used a paper plate to get everything sort of in order and now I have all of the centers made. Here you need to open them up. There, so all those centers are made and I'm working on the side unit here. That's this part. So that I'm doing while I'm doing other things. And so it is going along swimmingly. <laughs> Sorry, I had to say it. Here's the Liberty Box progress. I actually have, I have the top unit to sew together, then the middle is sewn together and the bottom sewn together. So there is only like four seams to do on this. Yes! And then it will go to the spa. So Cindy and Dennis, it's coming to you. Uh, I don't want, I'm not going to quilt that one myself. I'm just going to send it to the spa because I want it done. I want to get it done. Then I'll have to bind it right away when it comes back. It will go to the front of the line to get binding. And I also want to show you a couple of quilts that are uh, ones that I am going to be going out into the world to some other home. <laughs> My friend Sue, uh, that is local, she works with a lot of different <coughs> charities. And so she and I are partnering, partnering together so that she can help me um, find new homes for the quilts. And it's been fabulous. So she's stopping by and getting a few and I thought I would share them. Now this is actually the cover quilt of one of my patterns uh, called Stepping Stones. It is a great quilt if you love stars and love to have um, a few, you know, features, fabric like for, a, uh, for the border. So there I used, also I used this feature fabric, this blue in the background. And so that is on my website. You can go in and uh, download that. Link is below, it's in my digital store. This is one I did years and years and years ago when I just, pirates were popular. Pirate stuff was popular. Talk like a pirate day. So I think this will go to uh, somewhere, one of the uh, organizations that help, supports children. I think it would be great for kids. I don't know where this one was published. It's one of my older fabric lines. So 
Uh, I do know that. <laughs> I think it maybe it was a magazine or maybe I just did it for fun. Uh, so this was a very old line that I did years ago. It was a, one of the Sweetbriar fabrics. And then my globe trotting. I'm going to let someone have this. I believe she, she knows a group that's going to be taking this one. So this was a sew along we did. And I did a blue and white one, which has already been gifted to a new home. And so this one will also be going. And this was my fabric lines from the year that we did this so long, which was, I don't know, like seven years ago or something. It was a while ago. Oh yeah, seven, eight, probably eight years ago. <laughs> that was a while ago. <laughs> okay, I do wanna show you one last thing. <clears throat> The Cross Stitch University. They have some new bags also, which also come in red and green. These plaid bags, because the Cross Stitch University will start at the end of August. And it is, uh, here's the pattern that we'll be doing. But Kimberly Jolly at the Fat Quarter Shop will be hosting a whole series of uh, online tutorials and and it's just gonna be fabulous. I can't wait. And the Cross Stitch is so cute, even if you're experienced. Just make the cross stitch. It is so cute. Now they did come up with a kit. So you can get, the kit has, let's see. The kit has thread and cloth. So it's got the cloth. It's got a thread kit, a thread package. Whoops, thread package in there. It also has a darling, I love these scissors, the little scissors and these needles to try. try. <clears throat> now I have been using these needles and I really like them. So you can also get a Cross Stitch University zippy bag, which I think I will be keeping it in because, and then maybe in this, like the thread and stuff will go in this one and then I'll put it, put it in here. Plus there's a t-shirt. Oh my God. I'm just so, I'm so excited about the t-shirt. Let me open it a second. <laughs> I don't know. I'm goofy that way. But hey, it's like, it's fall, we're learning stuff. It's like university. So here we go. Ta-da! <laughs> and these are the best t-shirts. I have one of their, a couple of their other ones with this baseball style with the sleeve. And they're so, so soft, super soft. Okay, that is, <laughs> that's a wrap. So I hope that that sashing part made some sense and that it will be helpful to you uh, because it's not hard. You just have to take it a couple units at a time and you will be able to do wonderful sashings on your quilts. All right, my friend, Mwah. I love you. See you online.